I'm here. How you guys doing? All right. Good, good, good. Ladies and gentlemen, our guest for the evening, uh, Super A contestant, uh, Michael Tobin. Michael, welcome to Hit the Ropes Extra. Thanks so much for joining us this evening. Oh, thank you guys for having me. How you guys doing tonight? All right? How's everybody doing out there? We're good, man. We're good to have. Glad to have you on, man. Oh, no problem. Thanks for having me. All right. All right. So, what do you guys want to talk about? What's going on out there? Yeah, let, let's first, you know, we we've told we've told the listeners out there that you're you were just doing the Super Eight tournament. You know, let let everybody else know just a little about you before Demetrius and I start hitting you with any questions and whatnot. Well, um. I've been wrestling since 1996, and I was based out of New York for most of my life until about a year and a half ago. And in that time, I've had an incredible, incredible adventure in this beautiful wrestling business of ours and uh, worked all over the Northeast. Um, from 97 to 2003, I was one half of the Boogie Nights with my best friend and partner, Danny Drake. Um, we kind of floated around the Northeast a bit. We're... Uh, with Ring of Honor when they started out in those first couple of months there and uh, had a great time. And then he left the business in 2003. And then after that, I finally made my way to the ECWA, which was a career goal. And uh, since 2004, I have been one-third of the chick magnets in the ECWA with Mozart Fontaine and Brian Sosha. And the Super 8 was one of the goals I've had for my entire career. And it was an incredible, incredible experience, to say the least. All right, All right. And, for, and for those and for those that don't know, um, uh, Michael, give a little background on on what the what the Super Eight tournament is. Well, uh, since 1997, it's kind of been a showcase on the independent scene, and uh, Jim Kettner and the ECWA have been running for 42 years at this point. But I mean, if you look at the list of names that have competed in the Super Eight and gone on to incredible things, it, it's a mile long. You know. The winners alone, you know, guys like Ace Darling, Simon Diamond, Low Key, Christopher Daniels, Davey Richards, Petey Williams, you know, the list goes on and on and on. Guys that have won it and also the guys that have been given an opportunity to compete in the Super 8 that have gone on to have incredible careers in wrestling. It's a great springboard for younger talent and also, you know, it's an incredible opportunity to be a lot of guys got put on the map in the Super 8, let's just say. For sure. And I think this year was no exception. If you look at the guys like, I know you guys spoke to Tommaso Ciampa yeah. a few weeks ago, you know, Nick Logan, Quiet Storm, Mikazi, you know, uh, Metal Masters wrestled all over the world, Dan Echos. Uh, it was a great, it was a great time, you know, an incredible experience to be involved in it. Now you were trained by you were trained by uh, at the Funk in the Funk Conservatory, correct? Yeah, I went there in 2000. I had been working and kind of learned as I went along. I started out in uh, 1995 in boxing rings in Brooklyn, so I've you know been around a little while and uh, learned a lot as I went along. When I went to the Funk in Conservatory with my partner Danny Drake, it was the spring of 2000. It was a great experience and. Some of the guys that are in the same camp as, me, as uh, us were, like Tyson Dukes, a couple of guys from Toronto were in that camp, um, Dave DeJohn, uh, Danger, I'm trying to think who else notable, Josh Wilcox, who played in the XFL, um, Fred Curry, who's a third-generation wrestler. And, it, you know, I mean, it was a very, 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 you know, tough camp and fun experience, but, you know, we all kind of bonded and had a great time, too, you know. Yeah, for sure. Now you you started. You said you started out, and you were doing stuff. You learned as you went. Yeah. So, you know, okay. What age exactly was it that you started out? Uh, about eighteen. You know, we when I started out, actually, we used to go to Madison Square Garden when I was a teenager, and kind of wrestle in the street there for the people coming out. And uh, somebody filmed it for a public access show in New York, and uh, we met up with a guy named. Miguel Perez, who had a public access show in New York, and uh, that's when we started training in a boxing ring. And then there was a school in Brooklyn where we would film our show there where a lot of other guys came out of and just kind of went from there. And a few years later, the New York indie scene, I mean, a lot of guys that came out of that early 2000s 
New York indie scene are all over the place doing great things now because we also had the benefit of, let's say, where UXW was running or ICW or Jersey All Pro or all these guys. When ECW started to, you know, go out of business, a lot of those guys were in the Northeast and working the independent shows. And, I mean, every one of them would always take the time to pull the younger guys aside and help them out and work with them and give them good advice and, you know, say, hey, you can do it this way, you can do it, be you can do it better. And to have that experience there was incredible. These guys were still on TV but working shows with us. And, you know, the guys like the Chris Candidos, God bless his soul, or Balls Mahoney's and Little Guido's and Tony Mamelukes and the Baldies and all these guys that were still on TV at that point were working with guys like us and, and helping us out. So it was a great education for a couple of years there. And you worked, you worked for like several, you worked in several federations or promotions, whatever you want to call it. Do uh, you have a personal yeah. favorite? Well, um, I started out in uh, USA Pro Wrestling, which was, became UXW, which was, uh, you know, like my home for many years and uh, kind of went all over the Northeast after that. That was my home base. And then eventually making it to the ECWA in 2004, since then has been my home promotion pretty much. I mean, ECWA is as old school as it gets. You know what I mean? And working for Jim Tetner the last five or six years, you know, you learn so much on how the business should be and how, how professional a locker room can be and, you know, how shows are supposed to be run. And even the Super 8, I mean, the Super 8 is real old school, man. You know what I'm saying? Right. As far as I didn't know who the other seven guys were before it was announced, you know? And even until the day of the show, you don't know who you were wrestling. You don't know what, you know, it's, it's very old school, traditional, the way it used to be. So I would say my favorites were my home in USA Pro Wrestling when I started and the UCWA. But I've had a great time working for everybody, you know what I mean? Like, it's been, it's been an awesome ride, you know, like to get to work for people like WXW, Afa, just a wild Samoan and his family are incredible, uh, Jersey All Pro. We were there in Ring of Honor for a cup of coffee in the beginning, and that was an interesting experience. But, um, yeah, I've kind of floated around for a lot of years up there. All any, right, all any, right. Any, any time in, in, the, in the other two big boys, you, you mentioned Ring of Honor, any time in at dark matches or anything with TNA or WWE or something? Oh, well, um, I had some very interesting WWE experiences in the last couple of years. Um, I was uh, booked as an extra talent a couple of times. I know Tommaso was re recently telling a story about when he did some extra work up there and, and got to play a lawyer on the show. Well, my look, I don't know if you guys know what I look like, is, you know, I kind of look like an Irish cop, you know what I mean? So the roles that I would get, I had gotten to go a few times. And, uh, you know, I did a couple of spots on the show where, um, actually, it was a funny story. The, I think it was the last time that Kurt Angle was on WWE television. Uh, Rob, a friend of mine and Rob Echoes from New Jersey and I and a couple other guys, we were the uh, police officers that arrested him in, in the last skit that he did there in a promo with the big show. And to get, and then also, if you guys remember the, uh, the crime time segment from a few years ago with the President Bush impersonator in Washington, D.C.? Yeah, remember that? Right. Yeah, we were. I got to be one of the Secret Service agents for that, which is amazing. You know what I mean? Just an incredible experience. And so, you know, for guys like us, anybody who's on the independents ever, you know, to get to see so many of us are out there and don't get that chance. I mean, I had been around for, like, probably 10 years at that point, and to get to see how it's done there, to get to see how they run a show, you know, to go into the catering and see, you know, everybody's the superstars there. And, you know, it's kind of like... I would compare it to if you're a baseball fan getting to take an at-bat at Yankee Stadium. It's, you know, an amazing experience because so many people don't get that chance. So, yeah, I had a couple of great experiences in WWE there as an extra talent, and uh, I, I definitely had a blast, you know. Were you like a kid in the candy store there? Oh, completely, man, absolutely. It's, it's great. And then, you know, to see how hands-on that they are. Like, I know the story that came out a couple of weeks ago, you see how hands-on that, that Vince McMahon is and that how, you know, everything, you know, goes through him and we, you know, getting to rehearse the segment and the fact that my tag team partner, Brian Socher, and I got to stand there and it was also Aiden Chambers and uh, 
who won the Super 8 in 2008, and uh, Scott Wright. You know, 